1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 12. A life pleasing to God. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God just as you were doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles, who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more, and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs, and to work with your own hands, with your hands, as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. The key point of this passage is how we ought to behave. Now, many people in our culture today believe that you can behave any way you want, that God will just forgive us. And this is the two sides of the Christian coin. One is that God forgives those who come to him. But two, God has saved us in order that we might be like him, holy. So Jesus is not just Savior, he is Lord. We see several times that he's referred to as Lord. And as Lord, he is an avenger in all these things, in, in doing wrong. So he wants us to live properly. God did not save us because of all the good things that we do. Rather, instead, he saves us so that we can walk in a way that pleases God, and that the will of God is our sanctification, and that we should be, he, he called us for impure, not for impurity, but for holiness, in which he gives us the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be holy as he is holy. And so what is the main thing that he's asking us to do? It's that you abstain from sexual immorality. Now let's jump to verse 9 and look at what he's talking about here. He's saying, uh, now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write you. So the point he's pointing out here is they already understand that it's important to love. And many people today think that I can uh, be a loving, kind person, but I can still engage in sexual immorality. But one point that Paul is showing here is that if we do so, we transgress and wrong our brothers in this matter. And so in that case, what we're doing is we're not showing love. We are actually uh, harming others, whether it be uh, a brother or sister. So sexual immorality is wrong, and whoever disregards this disregards not man, but God. Finally, um, at the end of this section, we see that uh, Paul also urges the brothers to continue in good behavior and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs, to work with your hands as they instructed you, and to walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. So uh, taking care of your own uh, responsibilities and living in a uh, godly way is the focus of this passage.